Hello everybody, welcome to Ultra Films Mask Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the Czech M10 gas mask, so let's start the review. Okay, so inside of this bag I have the gas mask, the filter, and all the other stuff inside of here that goes with an M10, of course, and I'm going to be reviewing them. Also, we're going to do a test today since the filters, as far as I know, do not contain asbestos. So that's good. And if they do, a one-time uh, test is okay, and I still won't get lung cancer, hopefully. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's inside of this bag. Alright, so here's the bag. As you can see, it's big. It's a really big bag compared to the GP5 kit, of course. It's definitely huge for a gas mask bag. And that's because it contains more stuff. The GP5 kit just contained a filter, a hose, and a gas mask. This contains two cheek filters, because this is a cheek filter. Uh, two inhale valves, basically, because they screw onto the cheek filters and they're basically valves, so yeah. And also the gas mask and the lens outserts to protect the lens even more. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got it open, let's see what's inside. Okay, so I'm going to go over the small pouch first. Inside we have our two filters. These are, of course, the cheek filters. They're supposed to be going on the side. And you're supposed to breathe better with these. Also in this bag, or pouch, we have these screw-on inhale valves for the filters. Alright, so now let's get to the big pouch. Alright, so inside we have the M10 gas mask itself. Looks pretty cool. Also we have the lens outserts. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And let's bring out the mask. Okay, so let me take it out of its plastic. Here we are. The M10 gas mask. Okay, so these gas masks were given to the Czechoslovakian soldiers. I cannot say that word very well. Anyway, I think it's during the Cold War. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's during the Cold War because these were supposed to be an improved version of the canister filters because apparently the canister filters were too heavy. And so what they did was invented these cheek filter masks to slide the filters into the sides so that way you can breathe better and also have a lighter weight mask. However, it became actually heavier, which is a bit dumb, but still, I think this looks pretty cool anyway. Yeah, it just defeats the purpose of having a lighter weight gas mask, but like I said, it's, it's, it looks pretty cool in design. Anyway, we have the voice diaphragm, so that way you can actually hear what I'm saying. We also have the exhale valve and the cheek filter areas where you know you insert the cheek filters and the inhale valves are supposed to be on each side. We also have the triangular lenses, not circular like the GP5. Also unlike the GP5 we have straps because the GP5 has a hood. Okay, so let's have a look inside. Okay, now the straps are pulled over. Now we can look inside. So inside we have the oral nasal cup. Um, we also have these two buttons on the sides where you put in the cheek filters. And also you have the lenses where of course you look through. All right, so that's about it for the detailing. Okay, so over here I have the lens outserts. They're supposed to be for extra protection or if these get dirty you can take them off and you can still see. So what they do is they cover the outside lenses and you can pull this rubber up like this and probably fold it over the original lens like this. Okay, so... Oh goodness, see these are a bit of a pain in the neck to put on, so this might take a while, but we might be able to get these things on this mask. Okay, got it. 
So that's one lens down. I'm gonna do the other without filming because it might take too long to do the other. Okay, so now I have both of these lens outserts on the mask. I'm gonna try the mask on, not do a test yet, but just see what it looks like on my face. So let's begin. Okay, I'm gonna be putting on this balaclava just because the straps make my hair look a bit ridiculous and it kind of gets stuck in the straps. I have too much hair for gas masks. <laughs> Definitely need to shave it. Anyway, here's the gas mask. Let me put it on now. Adjust the straps to your size. Tighten it up so that way it's an airtight seal. Pull this over. Okay, so here is the M10 gas mask just before a test. No filters on the insides yet, but this is what it generally looks like without the filters, of course. It's a really, really cool mask. So it's airtight. So I'm going to do a turnaround so that way you can see the whole entire mask. But yes, the voice diaphragm is working really well. So you can hear me. So what you do to take it off, you grab these this brownish red strap and pull forward like this. So that way it doesn't get stuck on your face. Alright. So we're going to be putting the filters in and doing the test. Okay, so over here I have these inhale valves that screw onto the filters. They're pretty cool looking. They go onto the sides of the cheeks, of course, like this. And over here I have the filters themselves. Okay, so I'm going to be opening up these filters. Right, seal is broken. Now, the problem with these filters is the longer they sit around in open air and other places, the longer they, or not the longer, the shorter they come to expiring. Here's the inside of the filter, by the way. But yeah, these expire as soon as you have them left out, they will expire. Okay, so I'm gonna get the other one out. And always pull off this cap so that way you can have the proper amount of breathing. All right, so I'm going to be putting these inside the mask. I'm only going to be demonstrating one because apparently they're a pain in the neck to shove into this mask. So let's begin. Okay, so what you need to do is have the strap pulled over the face. And I'm going to be putting this filter in. So this is going to be a bit hard to do, so if it takes too long, you can go ahead and skip this part if you need to. Alright. Now where to start? Pull this out. Let's see the interior of the gas mask. Now we're going to grab our filter and put it in. So, this is going to be a bit hard to do. You know what, since this may take a while, I'm not gonna film putting in the filters. You can watch a separate video about that because there are other videos about how to put in M10 filters. So go check those out. And I'm just going to not waste your time and my time on this video and put these in without a long time delay, of course. One filter down. Okay, so I have filter number two down. So what you do is you grab your valve over here and you screw it on to the side of the gas mask. Make sure it's all nice and tight. Same with the other screw. And you have your gas mask loaded with the filters, which is a pain in the neck to insert, but ready to go. 
Now I do have to remind you these filters might be expired, so if it doesn't work, it's probably because of the filters that are expired, of course. Okay, so I'm in my closet right now to where I'm going to be doing the test, so that way none of the uh, Febreze gets outside, it stays in a contained area. I have the gas mask right here, hanging off my neck. This is what this strap is pretty good for, is for taking off the gas mask and uh, having it with you. Okay, so let's begin the test. So I'm gonna put on the mask, and then I'm going to seal it and see if the filters still work. If I can still smell the breeze, that means the filters are expired. If I don't, then the filters are good to go. Great. It's definitely going to be a lot more heavier with the filters inside. All right, so this is the gas mask. It's a bit more solid with the filters inside. Let's check if there's an airtight seal first. Okay, airtight seal. Got that. All right, ready? Let's start the test. Like, let me strap it a bit more so that way I can seal it a bit more. I don't want to start the test and accidentally not have this thing completely sealed. Okay. Now let's go. Okay. I cannot smell anything. That means the filters are fully functional. However, this does not mean you'll stand up against chlorine gas or any other terrible gas. The best thing we could stand up against was probably uh, tear gas. But these filters are working perfectly well so far. And I'm glad they're working pretty well. All right, let's take this off now. Hold on, real quick. Just one full turnaround with all the filters inside. All right, so these filters do work right now and are not expired, so yeah. And the vo voice diaphragm is working pretty well, too. Anyway. Oh, yeah. As soon as I broke the seal, I could smell the Febreze instantly. So that means these filters are working and are still good, so I'm happy for that. Yay! <laughs> so overall, I think this is a really, really cool gas mask. I think you should get it for yourself. However, if you are patient enough to withstand putting the filters in and putting the eye lenses on. Now those are a pain in the neck to do. But other than that, it's a pretty cool mask. And these filters are actually really good. So I might be putting a link in the description. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, of course, leave a like. And subscribe if you want more guest mask videos and other mask reviews. Also, leave a comment on what other masks you want me to review, as well as costume masks, gas masks, and many others. And you will see me in the next video. Goodbye.